Let us pray. Most good and gracious Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your house to offer you the worship and praise that is fitting to you. Bless this worship experience with your presence that as we go forth, we may glorify your name as you are deserving. Through Christ we pray. Amen. The end tried him, number 41, number 41. turn in our booklets to page three for the ceremony of the lighting of the fourth Advent candle. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praised and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world. Through the child bearing of blessed Mary, grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your son who is the Lord and Savior of all. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to your world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Let us pray. 
purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say the call for Advent 1 together. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise with the light immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for re reading from Holy Scripture. Chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gradual hymn number 40. Number 40. be with you. 
A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of Christ. As we sing the chorus, He is Lord. my Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we understand that you are our Lord, our Savior, protector, helper, and healer. We thank you for being the God that you are, the God that you have been, and the God that you will be. Open our hearts to receive you this Advent season as we have expectancy for your second coming. Give us grace to receive it and hope to achieve it. Through Christ, Lord, we pray. words from our gospel, Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. I speak to you now in God's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Before I get into the meat of my sermon, I would like to first let you know as to why I'm wearing the color red as we are in the fourth week of Advent, or about to celebrate the fourth week of Advent. This week, we acknowledge one of the four times of the year, sorry, where we have special intention of prayers for those who offer themselves up for the sacred vocation of ministry. That is Ember Tide. That falls on the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of certain times of the year. So this Saturday is the final day of the Ember Tide for this year, hence why I'm wearing red this morning. Now, as it relates to our gospel this morning, we see the story of Mary being visited by the angel, and, he tell, and he's telling Mary that she will give birth to a child, the Son of God, and she is shocked, she is taken back, but in the midst of it, she does not waver. She accepts the task given to her. She does not run. She does not tell God, not me. But she says, if it's your will, Lord, then so be it. But what's so special about this child? Yes, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and to a virgin mother at that. But what is so special about him in the midst of that all? It's the fact that he came to give hope. He came to give hope to a world who was lost. He came to give hope to a generation who had become godless. Focusing more so on the things that the law says as opposed to what the Lord says. He came to give hope to those who were the outcasts of society, the marginalized, those who were downtrodden, could not make it for themselves. The non-chosen people. And I think hope is the message that we all need from then even to now. Because Christ came then, and we are hoping in expectancy for his coming again. We recognize that, yes, he walked this earth before. And that was the hope that they needed then. But the hope we need now is that He is coming again to remove all the suffering and pain from our lives, to give us that eternal life and bliss with him. Hope, my brothers and sisters, is the essence that we all need to hold on to, to bring us to that next day, to push us through those hard times, to keep us going when things get hard and rough. Hope is that inkling that when you think you've had enough and you can't even walk anymore, you start to crawl. You keep on going because you understand that at the end of the day, this is not the end. There is something better waiting for you and I. When work gets hard, when friends abandon you, When family betrays you, when loved ones ignore you, we hope that God is still with us. And with that hope, we are rest assuring that he is with us because he proves himself day in and day out. That same strength I spoke about in terms of crawling when you couldn't walk, that is God helping you to move along, giving you that acknowledgement that his hand is with you, that his grace is supplying you with what you need. One of our greatest theological minds of today, Father Richard Raw said, hope is the patient and the truthful willingness to live without closure, without resolution, and still be content and even happy because our satisfaction is now at another level. And our source is beyond ourselves. I repeat, our source is beyond ourselves. You see, my brothers and sisters, it is not about what we have inside of us or what we were birthed with, but we understand that our help comes from above us. Our hope is in God himself, the maker, 
the creator, the great sustainer. Hope is the essence that allow us to bend beyond our circumstances. Hope is the ability to breathe air into crushed hearts, allowing them to expand and beat again. Hope creates room in our hearts for something more beyond ourselves. Hope gives us fresh eyes in the midst of our struggles. My brothers and sisters, in this fourth Sunday of Advent, or this Saturday eve of Advent, let us renew our hope with expectancy waiting on the second coming of Christ, knowing that he is still our God, knowing that he's still in the miracle working business, knowing that at the end of the day, when all this has passed away, he will call us all back to him and say, my child, you have labored hard. Take your rest. And not your final rest, but your rest in him, in his presence and his loving care and arms. That is the hope of this season that we need to look forward to. I encourage you to hold fast and to hold firm to this hope because God is still God and God still loves and cares for us all. So remain faithful, remain truthful, steadfast, and most importantly, remain hopeful. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all stand as we prepare for the intercession. Rejoice with Mary that the world comes among us. Let us offer to God our prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our hearts willing to surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the riches of what God alone and do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God of the mystery, who dwells in unapproachable light, draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May our assembly of discipline be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deepest heart, find strength and gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in our person and in our personal and in our person by Christ's saving work be brought to its fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May we remember before God all who are in need and who cry for the presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Together. Call, call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all peoples, peoples of the world, through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, 
We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God is faithful and he is just. And he will cleanse us of our sins from all unrighteousness. Let us kneel as we confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To all of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stand for the virtual peace. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. It's then pursue the things that make for peace, and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Offertory hymn, during which you can place your offerings in the box. 32, number 32. to heaven what a day of bliss that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory but come on
privilege of your offerings. Father, we offer you this gift which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money, that then we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice as this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You can sit your SG. We give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in the last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious Father, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body and blood of, of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son, in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable to him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
gift of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. And the organ of God. Six hundred sixteen. Six one six.
As we give God thanks and praise for this opportunity of sharing in his blessed sacrament, we ask him to keep our minds focused on the things of him. We also remember to pray for those on December side who offer themselves up for the vocation of ministry, those who were recently ordained, those to be ordained, that of seminarian Chris Higgs, those in seminary now testing their vocation. We also remember those who offer themselves in service in other avenues, whether it be lay ministry or ordained. We ask God to look upon them with his gracious favor and to strengthen them. As we kneel, we say our second post-communion prayer, eternal God and heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please be seated for a moment or two. I know on your behalf we want to congratulate Father Heal on his first Mass at Holy Cross today. among many that he will perform and celebrate. But um, today we begin this observance not only of Advent 4, but we begin his celebration today and tomorrow of his first masses at Holy Cross where he serves as a Sistan curate. And so, Father, on, on behalf of those here today, we want to congratulate you on your ordination. We want to continue to pray for you. want to assure you of our love and prayers, and we know that you will do well in your ministry, not only here at Holy Cross, but when you leave this place and go out on your own, we know you will, you will be properly trained and properly ready to do the Lord's work. One piece of advice, I have some more advice for you tomorrow, but one piece I give you today, remember it's, it's the Lord's work, it's the Lord's ministry. We are only instruments to serve him. So tomorrow, Father Heal will do Mass at 7 and 9.30, and then we'll have some takeaway, what they call takeaway or curbside refreshments after the first two ser after the services tomorrow, 7 and 9.30. So we look forward to that day tomorrow. And if any persons would like to give Father Heal a gift on this occasion, a love offering, there are envelopes in the back. You can drop it in the boxes, or you can just drop it to the church if you don't have it today, and we will get it to him. Just one or two more announcements. Um, this week is a very busy week, as you know, to get ready for the nativity of our blessed Lord and Savior. We're still looking for some poinsettia donations. I've been getting some in. I can still use a little more, so let me know. Christmas gifts for children, you see the boxes. The second box is pulling up now. I have one more box to pull up before Thursday, please, as I take these gifts to various children's homes on, on Wednesday, the 23rd. So on your behalf, I will give these gifts to children. This is very important to me and to you because there are going to be a lot of children who won't get nothing this Christmas. And even though everyone's worrying about food, you know what it is for a child not to get a gift at Christmas. That's heartbreaking. Um, so do what you can, please, Holy Cross, and let's so I can give as many children as possible a gift. That will be Father Christmas as I give these gifts out this week. Um, I think that's all I need to highlight. Just remember that the 2021 offering envelopes, for those who still requested envelopes, are on the two sides. They are dwindling down, but I want to get them out of the church this week. So if you haven't gotten your envelopes yet, please collect your envelopes. Now, you know the Christmas services this week. 
And the Prime Minister, in his goodness and mercy, has allowed us to have late church on Christmas Eve. So the services begin on Thursday at 10.30 with the first Mass at Christmas and the blessing of the manger. On Friday, we have a Mass at 9 o'clock. If it's too late for you to come out on Thursday night, we do have a Mass on Christmas Day at 9 o'clock. Sunday, December 27th, is Christmas Sunday, or what we call Christmas Sunday in the Bahamas, but it's really the first Sunday of Christmas. We have a Mass at 7 and 9.30 a.m. There's no Mass on Saturday this week, because there's a Mass on Friday. Then on Thursday, December 31st, 10.30 p.m., we have watch night service. That means we could bring in the New Year in church. And then on Saturday, January the 2nd, there will be a 10 a.m. Mass, like today. And then on Sunday, January 3rd, the first Sunday of 2021. And Lord knows we need to pray for a better year, 2021. You all agree? Say amen. amen. 2020 has been a, a, I don't know what you want to call this year. But next year, let's pray that things get better and we can build up this country and build up our economy again as we continue to be the best little place in the Caribbean. Amen? All those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, anybody here this morning? Okay, well, have a blessed day. Processional hymn 672, 672. This is for Father Heal. I have promised congregation stand birthday birthday for you your birthday your birthday too Remember to put away the books so you don't make leave the sanctuary sloppy. Brandon, no, no, no. Oh, let me hear thee speaking.